the intention of the first module. So this is about the enhancement of your assessment competencies so that you will not evaluating yourself, but you are also capable of evaluating the performance of your students as you are uh, teachers. And teachers also play the role of being uh, students, um, assessors of your learning. Can you see what I projected on screen? All right, can you see now my screen? All right, I think I could see it now. Uh -huh. So this is the first module, as I said, no, there are several topics under this module one, but we are the first uh, in this series. And our focus is on the enhancement of your teacher uh, assessment competencies. And there are three of us in today's um, session that will facilitate the discussion on how you could enhance your assessment competencies. They were already introduced, my colleagues from Philippine um, Educational Measurement and Evaluation Association, or PIMEA, and the two of us, Dr. David and I, are from the Philippine Normal University, the National Center for Teacher Education. And um, the target for this uh, whole day session is for you to be able to uh, plan your actions on the identified strengths and weaknesses among the assessment competencies expected of us as teachers. And what these um, assessment competencies are, I guess you already encountered them as we put them there in the pre-training survey that we asked you to accomplish um, starting the opening of this PD. So that was on uh, October 27, a um, few days after it, the launch of this PD. And it should have lasted uh, yesterday. And as this morning, when I checked on the number, there were like more than 18,000 teachers who have already signed up who answered the survey. But we expect 24,000 plus teachers. So th that means there are still some of you who are probably tuned in to this webinar who have not accomplished yet the pre-training survey of the teacher assessment literacy inventory that we asked you to accomplish. That has um, 25 items. We, we will just call this tally. So if I mention tally, so that refers to teacher assessment literacy inventory. And for this uh, morning session, these are the things that you should uh, expect from us. So I will do a discussion on how we develop the tally and its design and why we set that up in the online MS form. And uh, this will be followed by the presentation of Dr. David on these 25 items. So just the portion where you were asked to uh, respond to a set of multiple choice items. That there are 25 of those that would refer to um, the seven areas of competencies that um, every teacher should be able to uh, demonstrate as um, uh, having met, as these are all uh, as, uh, assessment standards, which uh, define how we should uh, assess students' learning. And then this will run for 1.5 hours. Dr. David will uh, explain its item in that uh, survey. And then this will be followed by Dr. Carlo Magno, who will be explaining to you what you are expected to do after this training. You no, know, of course, this um, session is just in the morning, but this does not mean that our session will really just be this morning. There is a such thing as a synchronous session where you um, uh, are expected to um, do some uh, uh, words, outputs, uh, as a result of your participation in the morning's activity. So this will be explained to you by Dr. Carlo. And then I will also explain um, the expectations. Now, one of the expectations from you in this uh, five modules that you have to go through, of course, this will last up to next uh, year. 
I think April uh, of next year. But at the end of the program, we should be able to see you know, your uh, professional e-portfolio, that you are ready to share your e-portfolio to all your colleagues and be proud of your work and, in, and uh, be proud in saying, I have demonstrated all the assessment competencies expected of me as a teacher. So that's what we hope to accomplish in this morning's um, activity. And of course, we will also be giving you time to post your questions So those of you who are here in the platform, um, feel free to uh, please post your questions. And if it's possible for you too, to share your reflections as a result of your understanding of uh, the, the items that uh, we'll discuss in this um, uh, morning session. So these are our expectations. So we expect each participant to share reflections on the process in the design, development, evaluation, and communication of the results of the teacher assessment literacy inventory to illustrate the use of assessment in informing teaching and learning. So what is this tally that I keep on mentioning? So uh, that's again uh, short for the teacher assessment literacy inventory. And this is what is contained in the um, pre-training teacher assessment literacy inventory that you also accomplish. So I'm showing here the image of the online uh, tool. This is a, a true MS uh, form that we asked you to accomplish. And as I said, more than 18,000 teachers have already accomplished this with some duplicates passed. So we have to clean the data still. So that means um, some have not accomplished this yet. But at this time, uh, it, it was already closed. But uh, just for this uh, part that we, we are explaining, but then for those who were not able to access this uh, and accomplish the form, we'll give you a chance to do this. We'll um, just, just visit our LMS later, no, after this session and try to assess yourself again. Um, I try to assess first yourself before you proceed to the, the other modules that will be delivered as part of this uh, professional development program plan for you. Now, just to um, explain to you why in this uh, tally, we uh, reflected their uh, competencies from international standards. Of course, we have the Philippine professional standards for teachers as our reference, but because we are um, equipping you with skills that are not only um, indicative of your ability to meet national standards, but also that of international standards. So we, we designed a tool that has been referred to the output of professional organizations abroad. These are uh, professional uh, education uh, organizations, and there are three groups who were commissioned to work on this sometime in 1987, but they completed the work in 1990. And I'm showing here that this is still the reference of a a lot of uh, assessment companies and organizations and institutions and even researchers when they talk about assessment competency. So um, just, just to cite uh, one, for example, here in the Bureau Cent Center for Testing, they highlighted the standards for teacher competencies in educational assessment of students that were also that uh, this set of standards developed also by the same three group of uh, professional education organizations that I mentioned. These are the National Council on Measurement in education, the National Education Association, and the American Federation of Teachers. And if you look at journals, you know, that uh, you know um, feature also some ideas on assessment models. Uh, for example, this one research that I am showing here, it was uh, released in 2021 this year. It's also citing the same source as the reference when they designed an assessment uh, model. And, and I highlighted there in their reference, their citation to the same group. And that's the reason why we also referred to it in the design of our Philippine-based study or teacher assessment literacy competency. And what are these assessment competencies that were uh, captured in the tally that uh, you accomplished, uh, 18,000 plus of you uh, as of yesterday? 
These are, there are seven of, the, uh, of this. First is that the teacher should be skilled in choosing assessment methods appropriate for instructional decisions, which means to say that there are assessment methods that, that are uh, known to you, but you have to choose the, the right one for a certain uh, instructional uh, objective or competency that you have targeted for your instruction. So choosing the right method, if it is traditional or performance-based assessment or maybe portfolio assessment, is a competency that you should be able to uh, demonstrate in the conduct of your assessment of students' learning. Another competency here is that you are expected to develop assessment methods appropriate for instructional decisions. For example, you chose traditional as the most appropriate uh, approach to assessing knowledge, uh, for example, as a learning outcome. Then you should be able to develop your assessment tool the meant to uh, assess knowledge uh, in the classroom or uh, knowledge of the students. Uh, attained as a result of their exposure to your instruction. That's just one example, of course. And Dr. Uh, David will um, uh, explain further all the items that were included in the tally uh, as far as these uh, competencies are concerned. So I explained the second. And then the third one is, as a teacher, you should not only be good at choosing the right as assessment method or to develop or design the, the tools for these assessment methods that methods that um, you thought of as appropriate to measure the, the outcomes of your instruction, but you should also be good at administering and scoring and interpreting the results. And later on, we'll show you the uh, we will I will explain uh, the design of our tool and how we administered it and how we intend to score it. And of course, how we should uh, interpret the, the results. Next, the fourth um, area of assessment competency is your competence in using assessment results when making decisions about individual students, uh, planning teaching, developing curriculum, and school improvement. So you've uh, heard choose no, as the first, and then second, develop, and then administer, score, and interpret. And this time, after the interpretation of results, you should be able to demonstrate uh, your ability to use the results in improving teaching and learning and of course uh, in our practice we should uh, we always end up with students uh, grades and we should also be able to demonstrate that ability in developing valid student grading procedures which use student assessments of course when we talk about grading we have the policy to refer to the, the rapid order number eight in 2015 which was also referred to in the um, interim policy in 2020 as our reference when we talk of grading students. And um, this should be our basis you know, when we talk of what uh, valid assessment, uh, assessment, uh, grading, you know, assessment, um, uh, a grading of assessment results uh, is concerned. So uh, the, the policy should uh, define our practice. And then the sixth one is, so after grading, so what do we do normally after grading? We need to learn to communicate the assessment results, of course, to the students as uh, our main um, uh, beneficiary of our assessment results because they are the ones we, we mold, you know, the, the ones we capacitate. And of course, we have to communicate the same results to their parents and other lay audi uh, audiences and other educators. And the seventh one is being able to recognize the so-called unethical, illegal, and otherwise inappropriate assessment methods and uses of assessment information. These seven areas of competencies, uh, when it comes to assessing students' learning were all captured in the 25 item test that you um, saw in the pre-training survey uh, given to you before the conduct of this training, of this uh, morning session. Now, of course, as I said, we also have our own reference when we talk of um, standards in assessing learning. And the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers should be referred to as well. We actually refer this, and later on, I'll show you what we did to ensure that the design of the tally is not only compliant with the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, but this um, tally also reflects the internationally accepted uh, standards for um, assessment of students' learning. So in the PPST, as you all know, um, which was, um, 
adopted by uh, DepEd in 2017 in DepEd Order number 42. There are four career stages. What we are targeting here for you to become is to uh, be at the third career stage. We want you to be at the highly proficient teacher career stage. And that means you should be able to consistently display a high level of performance in, in all those seven areas that uh, I mentioned uh, with reference to the international uh, set of standards. And in PPST, uh, of course, there are seven domains there. And one of these domains focuses on assessment and reporting. And there are five strands in this domain. And these are what you could see. The uh, first is on the design, selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies. I um, highlighted there um, design as that's one of the, um, the mentioned competencies as well in the international uh, standards that we referred to. Also select, uh, sorry, mali ata mga na-highlight dito. And then uh, monitoring and evaluation of learner progress and achievement as another. Then feedback to improve learning. Uh, that's another very important strand in the PPST. Communication of learners' needs, okay, uh, progress and achievement to key stakeholders. So they, they were like the students, the parents, and other audiences mentioned in the earlier set of standards and use of assessment data to enhance teaching and learning practices and programs which was again um, mentioned in the international um, set of standards now uh, in the pp in the tally that i mentioned we have to um, explain why we chose uh, ms form as our platform just for the pre-assessment uh, for some reasons so first uh, just to let you know how we did this before we gave this to you we subjected this to uh, pilot testing and these were the people I would like to acknowledge who helped us pilot tested no, the, um, the tool that we asked you to accomplish. So they were our students in the Philippine Normal University who are... <laughs> 